The demand and supply curves are used to determine market clearing. In other words, they are used to see where the demand for goods or services meets its supply, reaching an equilibrium. Let's see how this works. The x-axis or horizontal axis shows the quantity of a certain good or service, while the y-axis or vertical axis shows its price. This is the demand curve, which shows the quantity of a specific good that consumers are willing to buy according to its price, and this is the supply curve, which shows the quantity of a specific good that producers are willing to sell at given prices. At the point where the demand curve intersects with the supply curve, we have what is known as an equilibrium point. However, not all markets are always at equilibrium. It is possible for this equilibria to occur when the amount demanded does not equal the amount supplied. Let's see two examples. In some cases, the quantity of goods demanded by consumers is lower than the quantity supplied by producers. Here, the market is suffering from a surplus of unsold goods. In order for the market to reach again an equilibrium, suppliers must decrease prices to sell the excess produce, which will cause demand to increase. It may also be the case in which the quantity demanded by consumers is higher than the quantity supplied by producers. In this case, we will be talking about the shortage of goods. Prices will have to gradually adjust through different market mechanisms until the equilibrium price is met. As we have seen, a market can have a surplus of unsold goods, which is called excess of supply. In this case, the quantity supplied of goods will be greater than the quantity demanded. A market can also have a shortage of goods produced, as shown in the third graph, which is called excess of demand. In this case, the quantity of goods demanded is higher than the quantity supplied. As we've seen, a market equilibrium does not necessarily endure forever, in cases where there's a disequilibrium, both the price of the goods and their quantity will need to readjust in order to reach again an equilibrium. These fluctuations may become quite particular, as seen in cobweb models, 